Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to get your sound coming out the right speakers and some basic audio setup in Ableton Live. Just so you know, this is a live set that we're working in and this is where you have all your music and when you save a live set you can save as many of them as you want and they get housed inside a Ableton Live project. So what we could actually do is we could open a new live set, so I'll just create some clips so you can see that something's changing. We'll go to new live set, we don't want to save this one, and there we go, you can see that it's wiped that and we now have a new live set. If we wanted to save it, we can also save it from here as well. So now jumping into the preferences, we just go live, preferences, and here we get a few different options. At the moment you can see we have this red off button here and we have this orange bar down here saying the audio engine is off, and this is where we go and change that. So when you first start up live, you might have to make sure it's working with the right sound card or whatever your speaker system is. But before we do that, we also have look feel and I'm just going to explain two settings in here because I think they're quite important. We have the zoom display, which as you can see allows you to zoom in and out, which is great. If you have a bigger project with lots of stuff going on, you can zoom out a bit. If you have a big monitor or if you can't see very well or you're just starting out, you can use up lots of screen space just with a few tracks. And I'm going to leave mine like this, so I'll go for about 170, just while I'm teaching you guys, so it's nice and easy to see exactly what's going on. We also have the option of a few different themes or colour schemes. A lot of people like the mid-dark, or you can go even darker if you're working at night for a long time. However, I like to keep mine on the default setting. So that's the look and feel, and now we have the audio. So here we can choose our driver, so you might have Core Audio or ASIO driver, depending on if you're Windows or Mac. Then we have the input device and the output device. So the input device is if you're recording with a microphone. So you can see here, I've got built-in input, built-in microphone, and I've also got a few other things. And if we go to our output device, then here we can choose where we want the sound to come out of. So built-in output would be my computer, iMac, or whatever, our speakers. Uh, I could go to Telestream Audio, which is because I'm recording at the moment, I need to route mine through this, but for you guys, you're probably going to have something like a sound card, so Focusrite Scarlet or uh, Native Instruments or anything like that. But in my case, I'm going to be using the Universal Audio Apollo Thunderbolt sound card. So I've just selected that. And what we can do to test that we've got this working, we've also got our inputs and outputs as well, but we don't need to concern ourselves as long as 1 and 2 is turned on. We don't need to concern ourselves with those just yet. So what we can do is we can test that it's coming out the right speakers. So when I push this button, which is the test tone, we should hear it come out the speakers that we set. So in my case, it's going to come out of my two monitor speakers, my near fields, because I've set it to that output. But if I set this to built-in output, I'd expect to hear this sound come out of my uh, iMac. We can hear that and we can also change the frequency as well. So I'm happy with that. If you are getting any uh, audio artifacts such as crackles and pops or dropouts then what you can do is you can change the latency here. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this but you can see the latency is 11 milliseconds so what that means is that when I'm recording or playing an instrument there's going to be a latency from what I'm playing to what I can actually hear a delay of 11 milliseconds and as we go higher up we see this is now 43 milliseconds so you want to keep this you know 10 to 20 milliseconds really um, and it's going to depend on what sort of CPU and RAM you've got. But I reckon about uh, 512 is a good place to start. You're not really going to notice a 10 millisecond delay. We'll touch back on this a little bit later on when we go much more in depth towards the end of this course. 